What was that you said? What was it? What are you saying? Hmm. Taming the tongue. We are taming our tongues today. James 3, 6 through 8, verses 6 through 8. I want to read that for you. The tongue also is a fire, a world of wickedness among the parts of the body. It pollutes the whole person, sets the course of his life on fire. Oh my God and is itself set on fire by hell. Verse seven says, all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea and being tamed and have been tamed by man. Verse eight says, but no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Who are you poisoning today with the words that you are allowing to come out of your mouth? Hmm, think about it. Ponder that thought. Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Good morning. I am Pastor Carolyn, your pastor and purpose pressure of Tears to Breakthrough Ministries and T2B Global and the founder and owner of the Breakthrough app. So come on in. I have a word for you this morning. Um, yeah, I, I entitled this, um, <laughs> Your Mouth is Too Big. Your Mouth is Too Big. I remember growing up and um, like my parents and my my grandma, uh, my mom, which is what my granddaughter calls me, my mom, especially my grandmother, she hated when we uh, told on each other. She hated when we gossiped against each other, um, you know, or gossiped about each other. She hated when I, if one sibling would do something and you ran and told on that sibling, like my mama hated it, my grandmama hated it, my dad didn't like it. So the one thing my mother used to always say and my grandmother would always say is, girl, your mouth is too big. Your mouth is too big and you talk too much. Your mouth is too big and you talk too much. So that's for somebody out there. Your mouth is too big and you talk too much. Okay, God is saying today, your mouth is too big and you talk too much. The Bible says that life and death is in the power of our tongue. And so our words matter. Your words matter. My, my words matter. And the things that we say to each other matter. Words matter. So can somebody say that with me? Say, say, say we're going to make it personal though. Say my words matter. And so the words that you speak about yourself, the words that you speak about your children, your spouse, your job, your career, your business, your ministry, your life will begin to manifest because our words hold so much power. Remember, God created the world, the universe with his words, okay? And so and he created us. Amen. And so we create as well when we speak. I always say, when each time we speak, we are prophesying our future, good or bad. And so your words matter. The words that you allow to come out of your mouth matters. And so we were having a conversation last night, me and a few of the ladies from Queendom Purpose Academy. And one of the ladies brought up um, the fact that I don't even know how we started getting on that conversation because we, we ended up talking about actors and actresses and the women that that we just feel like their mouths are too big. And one person, I used to have a guilty pleasure um, of watching The Housewives. Like I, that was my thing at one time. Um, every once in a while now I may watch, but it's just it's just too toxic anymore. I can't even. It's not only is it toxic, but it's triggering for me. Um, uh, because yeah, I, 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 I've, I've suffered abuse. Okay. I know what abuse looks like. I know what abuse sounds like, and it's very toxic and it's very abusive. And so I really had to stop watching that stuff. Okay. But anyway, there was one particular person 
um, that was mentioned last night in our conversation, um, Dr. Heavenly. Oh my goodness. Now, first of all, she's actually a doctor. Okay. A real doctor, a dentist. Okay. On the housewives. I don't know if she's still on the housewives because I know she does a lot of different things. Now she has her own podcast and different things she's doing. She's supposed to be a life coach or whatever. I can't even imagine her being a life coach because I don't see where she has enough discipline to even like, she needs a life coach. <laughs> okay. That's my opinion. But anywho, I digress. Um, so anyway, we were having this conversation and, and, and whenever I see her, the first thing that comes to my mind is your mouth is too big. Your mouth is too big and you talk too much. So we started having this dialogue about her because someone was telling me that she got, recently got fired from, um, what is it called? Fox, um, Fox Soul. So, um, yeah, so Dr. Heavenly got fired from Fox Soul. And, and, and I said, well, it's probably her big mouth probably led up to that, I'm sure. So anyway, I don't want to put too much emphasis on her because this is not, she is, this is, no. <laughs> okay. But the point that I'm trying to make is I want you to really think about the words that you allow to come out of your mouth because words can heal and words can hurt. Let me just say that again. Words can heal and words can hurt. And so are the words that you that you allow to come out of your mouth, are they healing, words of healing, or are they words that hurt? You know, we have the ability to make someone feel better with our words, just like we have the ability to make someone feel worse with our words. And so words matter. So say that again. Say, say that with me again. Say words matter. Say my words matter my words matter, your words matter, and my words matter, okay, so you know, I just, I just want to have some scriptures, let me back it up with scriptures, and I don't just be talking, just to be talking, just to hear myself talking, because you know, God has something to say, amen, so grab your tablet, your phone, whichever way you take notes, you know, we journal here, so you really should grab your journal, because um, I'm going to give you a lot of scripture that you really need to be referencing as it pertains to your tongue, your mouth, and how your mouth is just too big and you talk too much, okay? That's for somebody out there. Uh, and listen, and what I'm saying, you probably have already heard what I am saying. God has already placed that in your spirit. So this is this message is no surprise to you, okay? Your mouth is too big and you talk too much, okay? So our main scripture for the day is found in James, th James 3, 1 through 12. And let me just say, for those of you who follow me, you know, my dog snores. She snores like a man. Okay. And she's right there. So if you hear these weird sounds, it's probably my dog snoring. Okay. I do apologize in advance. Okay. So James 3, 1, um, I'm actually going to start um, James 1. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, James 3. I'm going to start at verse 1 down to 2. Um, taming the tongue. See, I need to tame my tongue. Listen, taming the tongue, okay? Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. Verse 2 says, we all stumble in many ways if Anyone is never at fault in what he says. He is a perfect man able to control his whole body. So anyway, part that I want you to focus on here um, as far as taming that tongue of yours. And listen, as I speak to you, I'm also speaking to myself. Okay. I, 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 nobody's perfect. Okay. But I do try to be intentional with my words. I, I, I try to live my life in such a way when I leave a room, I don't leave people wounded okay, from the things that have come out of my mouth. Now, obviously, there has been times when somebody might have come at me the wrong way, and I might have lost it a little bit, but I, I do, I, I'll, I'll come back, and I'll apologize, okay? I will repent, because that is never my intention to hurt anyone. My intention is never to hurt anyone um, and leave anyone wounded, okay? Um, and many of us who are wounded will leave people wounded, and we we love leaving people wounded because we were wounded. So hurt people hurt people. So that's never my intention. My intention is to always leave you better, 
not bitter, okay? Build you up and not tear you down, amen? And that's what we should all be striving for. So taming the tongue. Not many of you, I wanna read um, the Amplified Translation. Not many of you should become teachers serving in an official teaching capacity, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who are teachers will be judged by a higher standard because we have assumed greater accountability and more condemnation if we teach incorrectly. And so that goes for your pastor. Listen, that goes for you as parents and you're teaching your children and you're coming out of your off talking crazy out of your mouth. You know, that goes for all these coaches. Everybody wants to be a coach. Everybody wants to be a mentor. That Listen, we all must take accountability for our words because listen, God's going to hold us to, you know, the things that we're saying to people that are damaging people. So many people are damaged, especially children. I've heard adults say things to children and children are damaged as a result. Okay. You're screaming and hollering and saying things and putting, saying things to children. Like if all of us could take some time, just take a moment and think about when you were a child and some adult said something crazy to you and you are now an adult and you're still hearing their words in your mind. Okay. Because they, they spoke that word curse over you. Okay. So we should be very careful with our words. Okay because our words matter, okay? And we should always want to build up and not tear down. Words can hurt and words can heal. Words can hurt and words can heal. So now let's go to Proverbs. So that was uh, James 3, 1. Okay, now we're gonna go to Proverbs 12, 18. Let me find that Proverbs 12, 18. Okay, there she goes, there she goes. You, you, did you hear the noise? That was my dog snoring, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Proverbs 12, 18, and it says, uh, speaking rashly is like a piercing sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. The King James Bible says, there is that speaketh like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. And let me read another translation here. The New King James Version says, there is one who speaks like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise. How are you speaking today? What words are coming out of your mouth today? Not just your words towards others, but even the words, the self-sabotage, we self-sabotage ourselves with words. We put ourselves down, right? Sometimes our biggest enemy is our inner me, okay? Like, so what are the words that you're not only speaking to others, but the words that you're speaking to yourself and about yourself? Because our words do matter. Remember, life and death are in the power of the tongue. And the Bible also says that, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so what you're speaking is actually what's really in your heart. Okay, let's go to that Luke 6, uh, third scripture, Luke 6, um, five, Luke 6, 4 and 5. Let me find that. Um, Luke, Luke and Luke, where are you, Luke? Okay, here we go. Luke 6, Luke 6, 4, 45. I don't know why I can't say that. Luke 6, verse 45. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to actually read. Um, there she goes again. The Amplified Translation. It says, a good instinctively good man produces what is good and honorable and, and moral out of the good treasures stored in his heart. And the evil man produces what is wicked and depraved out of the evil in his heart. For the mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. Okay. 
Um, another translation says a good man, a good person produces good out of the good stored up in his heart. An evil person produces evil out of the evil stored up in his heart for his mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. So out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth speak. So we, this is a heart issue. Your heart ain't right. Get your heart right. What's really in your heart? Okay, when that heart is wounded, it begins to wound others with the words that, that you allow to come out of your mouth. So you're, you're wounding others because someone wounded you. Okay, your mouth is too big. Okay, and you talk too much. So what I would like for you to do today, starting today, you know, we journal, hopefully you wrote down all these scriptures. Okay. Just start um, meditating on these scriptures. We meditate on the word, right? Meditate on the scriptures, write them out and begin to pray and repent. Ask God to forgive you for speaking ill of people, for gossiping, for wounding people with your words. And we're gonna pray that, we're gonna do that, okay? And then we want to ask the Holy Spirit to help us, ask the Holy Spirit to help you um, with your words, amen? Um, because our words do matter. I wanna read, let me read Hebrews 11, three, because um, we know that God framed the world with his words, okay? And so, Hebrews 11, three, by, by faith, okay, by faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. The Amplified says, by faith, that is with the inherent, inherent trust and enduring confidence in the power, wisdom, and goodness of God, we understand that the world, the universe, ages were framed and created, formed, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose, hallelujah, okay, by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are invisible, what am I saying? God created the universe. God created the world. He framed the world with his words. So think about what you're framing. Think about what you're building based on the words that you allow to come out of your mouth on a daily basis. Words that you speak to yourself and words that you speak over yourself and the words that you speak over your family and to people that you come in contact with, what are the words that are coming out of your mouth, okay? What are the words that are going to come, what are the words that come that are coming out of your mouth? And how about, you know, uh, Jesus, right? Jesus, Jesus spoke with purpose. Jesus spoke like, to build up, to teach. Like he did not speak to tear down. Like remember when the disciples were tripping, okay, on the boat during the storm, okay? And Jesus said, be still, be still. He calmed the storm on Mark 4.39. There's another scripture, write that down. Remember the disciples were totally tripping. Jesus was sleeping, taking a nap. He couldn't even take a nap because they were tripping. <laughs> Some of you are tripping. God is like, you're tripping, Okay, you, you listen, you're doing too much. You're saying too much. So Jesus calms the storm. Um, uh, Mark 4, 39. I'm going to start at verse 38. But Jesus was in the, in, the stern, in the stern, sleeping on the cushion. So they woke him and said, who are they? They are his, they were his disciples. They woke him and said, teacher, don't you care that we are, perishing so he's trying to chill he's trying to sleep and they're whining and they're all fearful and stuff they don't lost their faith they're scared so they're waking him up and so in verse 39 it says then jesus got up and rebuked the wind and the sea 
silence, he commanded, be still. And the wind died down and it was perfectly calm. Yes. Then Jesus, listen, why are you so afraid? That's verse 40. Why are you so afraid? He asked, do you still have no faith? So what I want you to do is meditate on these scriptures, journal them out, and I want you to be silent, silent, be still, right? Chill, okay? It's not that deep, <laughs> okay? Be still, amen, and ask Holy Spirit to help you with your tongue. Ask Holy Spirit to help you tame your tongue. Amen. Re repent for some of the things that you have said to your spouses, for some of the things you've said to your children, your coworkers, your neighbors, or whoever. You know, listen, I have a neighbor. We have a neighbor. It's pretty much a peaceful neighborhood and all the neighbors get along. But we have this one neighbor that moved in right during the pandemic. And she is just trouble. She always has something going on. Like she has this war going on with the other neighbor about her fence on their property line. Now we have enough land around here that you should not be worried about this little bit of property, okay? But I digress. I'm just saying, but some of the words that were exchanged, I'm like, wow, how deep is that? So we need to repent by our actions, okay, and the words that we allow to come out of our mouth, okay? I love the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what's really in your heart? So right now we're just gonna pray. So Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this brand new day, Lord. This is the day that you have made and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Lord God, we thank you for your word because your word is true. Hallelujah, we thank you. Hallelujah for your flawless word according to Proverbs. 30 and five, your word is flawless, Lord. And so right now, Lord God, I pray and lift up everyone under the sound of my voice who struggle with their tongue. Help them to tame their tongue, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Help them to examine themselves today, to search themselves and to repent from all the negative thoughts and words that they have spoken over themselves, for all of the thoughts and negative words that they have spoken over their children, for, for everyone that they have come in contact with, Lord God, and wounded, left wounded with their words. We're asking for help, Holy Spirit. You are our help. You are our very present help in times of trouble. Holy Spirit, you are our helper. And so I'm praying right now that you will help them to bridle their tongue. You will help them to tame their tongue. You will teach them, Holy Spirit. You're our teacher. You will teach them how to speak life and not death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for this amazing mind that you gave us, this amazing mouth that you gave us. You made us fearfully and wonderfully, Lord God. So when we speak, let us speak like we belong to you. Let us speak fearfully and wonderfully words. Let words come out of our mouth that will build up and not tear down. Words that will grow a person, help a person grow and not tear them down and destroy them, Lord God. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, Lord God. Deal with the overflowing issues that are in the hearts of the people these your people, Lord God. Hallelujah. Some of our hearts are so wounded and so broken. And so we know that hurt people hurt people. I'm just declaring and decreeing their healing today, Lord God. Heal them, Lord God. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. And I call it all done in Jesus' name. And I want to speak a third John blessing of you before I close. I pray above all things that you will prosper, that you will be in health even as your soul prospers in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, your words matter. Your mouth is too big, okay? And you talk too much. If this message has resonated with you, then I know that God has already been dealing with you on your mouth and the words that you allow to come out of it. It's time to tame your tongue. So I recommend that you journal. I gave you the scriptures. 
look them up, journal them out, meditate on them and pray them out. We pray the scriptures here, pray the scriptures and begin to ask Holy Spirit to help you to tame your tongue, okay? See, I need to tame my tongue because my mouth is too big and I talk too much. And so today, as we go throughout our day, let's all, and I'm including myself in that, practice saying something nice to someone today, something that's going to build someone up and not tear someone down. Give someone a compliment when you go to the grocery store. Give someone a compliment when you go to your office today or whatever you're doing today, where walking your dog, wherever you are today, whoever God places in your path, smile and give them a compliment. Say something so that when that person walks away, they walk away better and not bitter. This is Pastor Carolyn, your pastor and purpose pressure of Tears to Breakthrough Ministry, T to be global, and the founder and owner of the Breakthrough app. Don't forget to go on our Breakthrough app and check it out if you want more of this. Check it out. You know, our ministry is to build up women who are starting over after trauma, after abuse, after divorce, after loss, okay? Because there is life after. And so God has called us to live our best and blessed life now. So we're not stuck in the past. We're not all, we're not gonna stay wounded with the past hurts, okay? And, and anybody who's ever spoken any word curses over you, I'll just break that off of you right now in the name of Jesus, okay? Because God says he had a, has a plan for you. And that plan in Jeremiah tells us it's for good and not evil to give you a hope and a future. God has a hope and a future for you. So you're going to have an expected end. Okay, listen, lean on him today. Okay, and watch your words. Okay, watch your thoughts. Okay, because your thoughts are going to turn to words. But let God deal with that heart of yours. Because out of the overflow of all of those issues in your heart, your mouth will speak. So we got to deal with our issues, deal to heal. I'll see you next time. God bless you. Have a blessed and marvelous day.